So out of the blue, Google drops the Beta 1 for Android 11 yesterday on Pixel devices. And of course, all the new announcements with the new features that we kind of leaked to you guys about a week ago when some devices got this update a little early. Today, we're gonna check it out on the Pixel 3a and of course, see all the new features that were officially made yesterday. And of course, talk about this new functionality that enables us to open Twitter, scroll down five, compose a new tweet. all by using my voice. This is TK and this is XTA TV. So I went ahead and loaded up the Android 11 beta one on my Pixel 3a. Um, I do wanna to mention to you guys that this is still a beta, this is not a final release and it is currently only available for Pixel devices, which means if you're not running a Pixel, you're more than likely gonna to have to wait a little bit longer. Um, nice side note though is Oppo and Xiaomi both announced yesterday and today that they are going to be releasing a beta one release of their next version of their color OS as well as MIUI on the Mi 10 as well as the uh, Oppo Find X2 Pro series of devices. So we're going to see more development, more devices supporting it, but currently only available for Pixel devices. So again, Pixel 3a should be able to run this perfectly fine. And we'll start off first by looking at the new update that we saw with voice access and essentially the ability of having more contextual, well, contextual uh, recognition of the space that it's in, not necessarily just using numbers. Tweet. This is a quick example of using delete the entire sentence. Undo. Undo. This is an example of voice access on the Pixel 3a using Android 11 beta 1. So you saw there, I was able to use my voice to do all of those things, not only jumping into the actual tweet box, the edit box, also undoing certain things without even using numbers. I was actually using normal conversational words. And that's one of the main benefits that we have now with voice access. Uh, this feature is updated. It is available as a separate application and it is not part of Android 11 beta one. You do need to download it directly from the Google Play Store. But again, very nice function. And again, it's working on a Pixel 3a. So imagine how well it's gonna run on a Pixel 4 or even on the brand new Pixel 5 coming out later this year. One of the other cool new things that they also did with Android 11 beta one is the actual aggregation of notifications. So you'll notice that there's now a grouping of notifications. On top of the fact that music control once turned on in developer options is actually present directly in our notification panel. and also gives us the ability of actually jumping between multiple sources of audio. So in this situation, I have YouTube music as well as YouTube playing audio from different sources and I'm able to swipe between them. Of course, I have access to all of my toggles as well as the native screen recorder that is built in. And again, back again from last year from Android 10 developer preview, but now also present here. I really hope that this one actually stays in as a feature that we can use in the future. So now any kind of conversations, let's say, you know, uh, WhatsApp using it, uh, Hangouts or any kind of conversation apps will always stay together at the top. Now we also have basically um, alerting notifications so the standard ones that normally don't come all the time. And of course we then have now our old normal silent notification that nor normally kind of pop up in front of us. One of the other cool things is the ability of setting priority over certain things. So an example right here, if I press and hold on this notification, I'll give it priority mostly because I want to basically show you guys that the icon itself at the top of the window changes based on that request. So in this situation, I gave uh, this, this icon. So you'll notice this logo showing in there, by the way, that's my channel's logo. And of course, the other conversation here, I just gave it normal notification. If I swipe up, you'll notice that the notification at the top left here shows the channel icon for my personal channel. And of course, there's another one for Hangout. Giving priority to a specific uh, conversation with a specific person will do that regardless of whichever application that you're using. So it's definitely very nice to see here that when you give priority to a notification, it actually tells you right there. So I know now I have a priority message from that contact directly present at the top. All of these things are nice and present and of course functional now, obviously very seamlessly with the system UI. Speaking of the system UI, we now have also a revamped uh, recents application or recents menu, which you notice that the actual preview is a lot bigger. We lost the application suggestion as well as the search function at the bottom, but now we also gained a screenshot. We also have the ability of using select and select is really nice and contextual. So you'll notice right there, it highlighted every single area of the menu that tells me basically this is something I can actually select. I'm able to select it, go in here, and of course, either select the image itself, select the text, I can do a search on it. 
And if I select text that is actually contextually available for me to open, so an example here that was a website, it'll also suggest for me to be able to ability of opening it up directly within Chrome, or I can also copy, share, and do my normal stuff. Lastly, I also have the ability of using share, which basically takes a screenshot and opens up the share menu for me. Very simple, very easy. Or I can do a straight screenshot. It'll take a screenshot of the actual image and not the actual screen as it stands. And of course, gives me the ability of doing share and edit and of course, access to all of my menus. All of these things, again, very nice. And of course, with smaller devices like the Pixel 3a, become very handy to have a much bigger preview screen as opposed to what we've had in the past. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about today is the power menu. We have a few new things that are also present here that is very cool. The revamped power menu now lost the screen start functionality that used to be part of the bottom screen. And now, as you notice, they have the emergency contact, power off, and the restart. And the screenshot now is present in the recents application. Access to Google Pay is still in the same spot. We saw that with Android 10.0, but now the integration of the home automation functionalities, specifically using the Google Home app, is very nice. And one of the main features that I really love about this is the ability for me to use this system using my notification panel or my power menu to jump into my Nest camera without having to even install the Nest application. As long as I have the Google Home installed and logged in with the right account, this should work easily. And as you can see, accessing the camera very nicely. And of course, I can access the lights. The office lights are in here. I can dim them, turn them on, and of course, customize the entire experience. Uh, for the most part, that entire options, all those options that you saw there are present directly in the Google Home application. So as long as you have that application installed on your smartphone and you log into it with an account, you'll be able to customize your power menu now to have all of these nice, cool features. Uh, the next thing I do want to talk to you guys about is the ability of, obviously, as you saw before, we have the option to be able to play music directly in the notification panel. This has to be turned on in the developer options. It is not turned on by default. But once it is turned on and you reboot the device, this is going to be very nice. So let's go ahead and play some music. I did lower the volume here mostly because I want to show you guys that next update that we saw here. Uh, out of the box, they renamed the sound section from volume to sound. So now it's called sound. But we also have the ability of selecting where the audio is coming from. So as you notice, my volume is down, but I'm also able to jump in, select if I have a Bluetooth paired headphones or anything that's connected to our, over Bluetooth or even USB-C. Uh, I can actually set it up to go play there or play straight on the phone, all straight from the main menu. Again, all these little options that you normally don't see before are now present. Let's talk about some of the customizations that we have to the UI. So we'll go ahead and press and hold. We have a couple of options that we did not have in the past. First and foremost, bubbles are going to be coming in as part of supported uh, UI built into Android 11. So now we no longer have them as a developer option. You can actually turn them on for supported apps. Currently, unfortunately, only uh, Google, uh, Facebook Messenger is supporting it. But what I wanted to share with you guys is the suggestion functionality. Now, under the suggestion section in the uh, customization function within the launcher, you're able to actually turn on suggestion on home screen and how this works. It's really nice. So let's say you see this row of applications that you have. Those are generally the normal applications that are pinned by the UI. But let's say I want to move one of them. So I'll go ahead and move the Google Play Store. Google recognized that in my testing within the last 48 hours, I've been using the Google Home applications quite a bit, so it recommended it for me. And now at this point, if I like this recommendation, I can press and hold, I go directly into pin prediction, and at this point, it becomes part of the app drawer. If I change my mind, I want to be able to bring back my Google Home or the Google Play Store, it works just fine. And of course, I'm still able to access my recommendations list at the top. Again, I've used Google Home quite a bit in the demo for doing this video, so it recognizes it. And it's supposed to learn from you. So some things like this you could do and still access all your favorite applications and customize this ribbon as it's no longer just an app drawer for you to be able to basically just put apps in it. You can actually use suggestions based on your usage. The other things that we also have now as far as customizations is the styles and wallpapers application has at, now has a clock function. Unfortunately, only has one clock present, but uh, we did notice some new customizations when it came to the actual icon shape. So we'll go ahead and go to custom, next, next, next. And now we'll notice that we have more options than what we've had in the past. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all of these options are available. You're able to customize them by obviously creating your own presets. You can see them right there and you can change them. And of course, just go in there and customize your wallpaper as well. So nice uh, functional options that we have now available directly out of the launcher. Of course, swipe down for notifications, still present, and the ability of actually swiping down directly from the home screen, still present there always. The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, the fact that it is something very interesting, uh, the ability of tethering over USB and well, actually tethering over Ethernet. And what I mean by that is under hotspot when tethering, you actually now have the ability of using Ethernet tethering as in using a USB Ethernet adapter. 
Now, the use case for this obviously would be is using your mobile data to share your internet connection to a router, and then at that point, being able to share it with more, maybe a wired connection as opposed to just being wireless. We can already do Wi-Fi wi hotspots, but now we don't even have to use that. Using USB, we can actually provide power maybe over USB with ethernet, and then run that connection directly into a PC and then share it directly that way. More options, new ways of interacting with it, and definitely very nice and appreciated. Now, the last few things that I really wanted to share with you guys is that now we also have the support for wireless ADB. So you no longer are limited by having to be able to connect over a wired connection to get ADB support. Wireless ADB is present here. Um, we also have permission revoke uh, options to actually uh, expire after 30 days or a certain amount of time of using an app. So meaning if you use an application and you haven't used for, let's say, a month, and that application basically requires, let's go ahead and swipe up, uh, and let's say that application just hasn't been used for a month or two, the permissions that you gave that application will expire at that point and you need to pre-give those permissions back. So applications that are on your phone that haven't been used for uh, you know, a few months, six months, or even a year will not be able to run in the background without your explicit requirement. We're actually enabling them manually yourself by going in there and setting it up in the settings. Normally, it will expire, which is definitely very nice. And of course, all of these things are now present directly in here. And we also saw some nice information about the wireless reverse charging coming in, hopefully with the next version with Pixel devices. So hopefully that's going to be with the Pixel 5 coming up later this year. Um, let me know what you guys think of the new features that we have with the Android 11 uh, Beta 1. Now, again, for me, this is definitely a stable uh, release. I would definitely say that if you have a spare Pixel device and you want to be able to test this out, I think this is definitely a great uh, option to check out to see all of the new features to be part of the system. Upgrading from uh, developer preview 4 to beta 1, I did have some problems that could have been a PC issue, but for me, honestly, I would say is test this out on a separate device just in case you do need to do a wipe. And of course, I'll make sure to give you guys some links in the description below to the XDA portal, to some of the articles that were covering all the new development with Android 11 beta 1, and of course, all the new features that we're discovering as time goes on with more betas available. This is TK and this is XDA. Please make sure to check out my channel for a comparison between Android 11 Beta 1 and Android 10. But other than that, be safe. I'll see you guys in the next video.